Carolyn asks, is there an ideal temperature at which the virus multiplies fastest? So Carolyn, I think, I think you're asking about within the body at, at the temperature that the virus multiplies fastest. Think of it like this. Um, the virus likes humans as hosts because of the, the uh, ambient temperature and the environment that the human body provides. So normal temperature is where the virus likes it. And we often mount a fever, start to increase our temperature to try and make the human body less hospitable for the virus. So increasing the temperature probably decreases the speed of that, that replication. Um, that, that's, it's not an exact science, but that's in part why the body responds the way that it does. Lewis asks, I just flew back from Florida and tested positive. What can I do to make myself less anxious? Mm. Well, Lewis, first of all, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry that you've tested positive. I'm sorry that you're, you're feeling anxious. I understand it. Um, obviously, I don't know much about your, your background, uh, your history, uh, how old you are, pre-existing conditions. A couple things to keep in mind. Um, first of all, if you just got tested positive and you weren't having any symptoms, um, that would obviously be a different situation versus if you were starting to feel ill. I think there's a couple things that you should do, and I would recommend this, frankly, for anybody who's watching, regardless of whether you've tested positive. Telehealth has become a big deal in this country. I mean, the amount of visits that are now happening via the screen where you can talk to your, to your healthcare provider uh, like this, I think is, is, is exponentially increased over the last year. It's important, I think, for everybody to try and set up how they're going to do telehealth visits with their own doctor, their own hospital. Talk to your doctor's office, wherever you're getting your care, and set that up now download the software onto your computer, whatever it takes so that you can do telehealth visits. And I'm talking about this pandemic, but even afterward, this is, this is gonna be different. And I think Lewis, that will help allay some of your anxiety as well, just being able to have that resource. For yourself personally, if you are feeling sick at all, treat the symptoms. Uh, if you're feeling congested, decongestants, take something for your fever. You also may wanna consider measuring your overall pulse oximetry how much oxygenation is in your blood. It's called a pulse oximeter. You can buy these now. They were hard to get. They're easier to get now. Just measure your blood oxygenation. Make sure it's staying normal. I wish you the best, Lewis. Again, I'm sorry you're going through this. I'm sorry you're anxious about it. I understand it. Uh, hopefully that helps a little bit uh, with what little information I know about you. I'm sure you've gotten a lot of questions about pregnancy and the vaccine. What are we learning now? Well, we're learning a lot more. You, you may remember that uh, pregnant women were not included as part of the initial trials, uh, which is not unusual. Typically, uh, they're not included, but there were women who became pregnant during the, those initial trials. And there have been a lot of women who are pregnant who said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and get the vaccine anyway over the past few months. And now there's data on them as well, in addition to some smaller studies. Bottom line is that <clears throat> the vaccine does appear safe in women who are pregnant. It appears that the vaccine actually provides better antibody protection than the antibodies that people get from becoming naturally infected. And some of those antibodies, Susan, will actually transmit uh, over the placenta and through breast milk to the baby. So, you know, newborn baby could also have some protection. What, they, what they're trying to figure out still is when is the best time to give uh, a dose of, of the vaccine to a pregnant woman? Which trimester is one better than the other? Is there one vaccine that may be better than the other? Mm -hmm. Is a dosing different? Stuff like that. But overall, you know, pregnant women have already been taking the vaccine and now there's, there's increasing evidence that it's safe and effective. They're doing their part to help stop the spread of COVID-19, rolling up their sleeves, getting fully vaccinated. Still, there's a lot they're advised not to do, but a new clinical trial may change that. And this will help inform science-based decisions about mask use and about social distancing post-vaccination. Right now, for those fully vaccinated, the CDC is still advising against travel and continues to recommend masks and social distancing unless around a small group of other fully vaccinated people or with those who are low risk, unvaccinated and from a single household.
The trial now underway is looking into how COVID-19 may spread by studying 12,000 college students at more than 20 universities across the U.S. We hope that within the next five or so months, we'll be able to answer the very important question about whether vaccinated people get infected asymptomatically, and if they do, do they transmit the infection to others? One group of 6,000 students will get Moderna's vaccine immediately. The other half will get the vaccine four months later. The students will fill out questionnaires and will swab their noses daily, as well as provide blood samples. Their close contacts will also provide samples. When these people get infected, how often is that? If they're asymptomatic, how much virus do they have in their nose? And do they transmit it to people who are their close contacts? Those answers will help form recommendations on the future for the fully vaccinated. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither.